Welcome, Welcome to Vision's Youth, Youth Service. service. Join, Join us in our journey of exploring, exploring the River Trent. Trent. Okay, here we are at the Wolsey Centre in Rugeley with Nicola, the Community Engagement Officer from Transforming the Trent Valley. So I think what we might do then is actually we could go for a little walk around um, Temple Lake, around this bit, because that is quite shaded, uh, which will be nice in this heat as well. So we can have a little walk through uh, the woodland, which is called Badger Wood, and then around the back of Temple Lake as well. And there's usually a few different things um, that we can see there, so a few different birds and plants. Uh, so then we'll cut back round there and then go back round by the river and there's some beautiful spots over at that bit as well. So we're standing on one of the pond dipping platforms and the, lots of school groups come and use it um, for, for sessions when they come in school time uh, and there's loads living in these, in these areas just because we've got these reeds and actually if we look down we can see some of the creatures just on the, on the surface of the water. Can you see those down there? Kind of pond skaters and they just scoot around on the surface. And we saw that big dragonfly a second ago. Oh, and there it is again. That's what, three inches long? And I think it's got um, kind of golden, kind of orangey golden wings as well, which I think means that it's a common hawker. Uh, I think that's an identifying feature of dragonflies. So the brown body and the kind of the brownish wings means it's a common hawker. My name's Siobhan Pollard. I work here at the Wolsey Centre. It's a nature reserve tucked away on the bank of the River Trent and there's 26 acres. It used to be a ground where there were, was a big haul on, so that got damaged by fire and demolished and then the land was taken over by the Wildlife Trust in, I think it was 2003. When I first started here, we had a very small amount of people walking the site. As the footfall increased, it became more of a family space, somewhere that families can enjoy and come and learn about wildlife. It's just quite peaceful and quite a nice experience to just get away from the busyness with the town also being quite nearby. My family are a mining family. My grandparents moved down from Northumberland. My granddad, my uncles and my dad came to work in the pit. And that was quite a big industry where I lived. So I lived on the Pear Tree Estate, which was largely built for the mining families. My dad drove the locomotive, so he didn't necessarily go um, deep underground. But my granddad and my uncles, they found it quite a struggle, but they also found it a struggle when the mines closed because then they didn't have their income. They were forced to struggle for a little bit until they got another job. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to go near the river when I was younger <laughs> because I'm not a very strong swimmer. The, the real thing that I remember about the, the river is they used to hold, um, on bank holiday August, they used to hold a raft race. They used to come from the car, the garden centre car park right down to the car park on the bypass. So that was quite fun to watch because there were quite a few people falling off. <laughs> oh yeah, they were all homemade, I think. <laughs> That's what made it funny, but there were quite a few people that lost their glasses whilst they were, they didn't take them off whilst they were on there, but yeah.
this river is like flowing, but the other lake was like mostly just still. But it's like flowing quite steadily. This river seems to have a lot more rocks and looks like a lot clearer. Um, it's also a lot more open on one side than it is on the other. Just like the plants that grow in the nook, you know, like, like spiky weed. Oak trees, sycamore trees. And loads of nettles. And nettles. I was um, an instrument mechanic for 20 odd years and then an engineer. It was the sort of thing I'd always wanted to do and carried on um, until the station shut, basically. The reason for it, the station being next to the river is you want water to cool a number of the systems on the site because a lot of heat is generated um, from the rotation of the turbine. Uh, and other things as well and so you get pumped through the system and a heat exchange to remove that heat okay. before it went up the cooling towers and the vapour going out the top is, is the evaporation of that warm water into the air so that the water that's left is cooler with the water so evaporating the on the floor. steam that's coming out the top of the, of the massive cooling towers yep. is water from the trunk. Yes. You know, the work could be fantastic, you know, you've got a lot of satisfaction at times from it, but it was most definitely the people, because it was, it was the sort of place where people came and they didn't, you know, it wasn't often that people only stayed there for one or two years. Like me, you know, a lot of people went there expecting it to be a job for life, which it, it probably sort of was in the early 80s, uh, and, and not so much later on, because obviously they were closing down. But... B station had something like 500 people at it when I first started there and maybe 400 or so at A station. I believe the peak was about 1100 people across the whole site that were directly employed by the power station. Um, but yeah definitely the people because they were people that you worked with for maybe 20, 30 or even 40 years and so they you know to a degree they are like extended family. Thank you. We had peregrine falcons bred on the site and probably for the last I don't know, 10 or 15 years we had nest boxes on the power station where they bred. They'd disappear in the winter but in sort of like February time the pair would reappear and you'd hear them calling and sort of like pair bonding again. They fledged lots of birds there over the years. Um, the other thing that you could get on power station sites like that, because you've got the big tall buildings, you used to get a bird known as a black red start. Uh, very scarce in the UK. So I remember watching the male singing once. I could hear it from the ground. It was on the 138 foot level, which was where the top of the coal bunkers were. So I went up to the top of the roof of the power station and looked over the edge down and I could see this male singing. So you got all that sort of thing. And otters obviously went along the trend. The other side of the river to where we are, there's a steep uh, exposed bank and there's a clue as to where the kingfisher nest is and uh, Katie's just trying to figure it out. Is it the white dot? Yep, yep, the big white splodge over there. So what do you think the white splodge is? Poo. Yeah, it's bird poo, yeah. So what they tend to do is they tend to fly just above the surface of the water. So that's the place to look, it's not high up in the sky, but quite close to the river, quite close to the surface of the water. Yeah, I'm Nick Lyons. Um, born in Stafford, moved to Rugeley when I was five and a half years old. My family have been here for about seven, eight generations. Um, great, great, great grandfather and great, great grandfather were the local stonemasons in Ridgely. First connection with the river would probably be around 72, 3. My father, who worked at Universal Grinding Wheels in Stafford, um, they had a pool at Western and he asked his friend 
who was nearly retired then, would I like to go? And I just loved it. Not just the fishing, but the nature, the, the dawn, the dusk, everything about nature. Um, tried the river in Rugeley, probably early, early to mid 70s. And because it was always polluted, very little fish. Um, and all you would catch would be like um, sticklebacks, minnows, and gudgeon, which are but bottom feeding fish. And then a few years later, we started getting chub and roach in the river and dace, and it sort of moved on from there. Obviously, the quality of the water was a lot better. And then we uh, started getting bream and predators pike and, and things like that. And it's getting better and better. Um, obviously, we follow the Trent the Mersey Canal, which is sort of running parallel here, and you've got the aqueduct. And, um, so there was always something going on. Uh, I remember probably 15, 16, going along the river and by the canal, heading towards the Walsley Bridge and finding a, a nest of stoats. And being that age and recently losing a hamster, I thought, I'll take one of those home. And when my mother saw it, she went absolutely ballistic. <laughs> and I said, what shall I do? And she said, you'll take it back where you found it. And how on earth do you find a family of stoats in, in the wild? But I went down and came across them straight away and the mother accepted it and off they went. I think the river benefited from the power stations. Obviously taking the cool water out and pumping hot water in was a better environment for the fish species and what have you. Because where the power station is, I used to fish the river both sides then and nobody used to fish it and it was, you had it all to yourself. And it is a beautiful place and it's it's calming, relaxing, lovely. Creating a wetland habitat for the that people can access for the public is has got to be good. Um, because we're fortunate here we've got an area of outstanding natural beauty, can it chase? And that side of the river is more heathland. And one of your ways you go the other side and as you go farther down obviously it's, it's quarried a lot for the aggregate and Rugeley seems to be in the middle where we've got the beauty of that and then the diversity of that and for more people to access it it's got to be beneficial to everybody. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and everyone, everyone who helped, who helped us. us.